So in the earlier video, we have talked about how to send a request from client to server using socket programming. So let me go for a recap. So we have a socket from the on the client side in which you have to mention two things, the local host and uh, the IP address, which is local host here and the port number. And then you have to uh, send a string. You can send the string using a method which is write. But in order to use write, you have to create object of uh, Hold on, we are writing here OS, it should be out.write, we can, yeah, we can, we need to use out.write here. And instead of write, we can also use out.println and then OS. In fact, you can use OS directly, we can say OS.write, uh, that, that will also do. Or we can use out.println, that's, that's one way of doing it, right? And then we can say flush. On the server side, we have accepted this data using br.readline and then we have assigned to str and then we are we were printing that thing. But now, what we need to apply here is we, we, we require one more string here, we will name this string as str1 and this str1 or maybe not str1, we will say nickname. So nickname will be equal to I want to fetch only the first three characters so we can say str dot so there's an option of substring in which you have to mention the first point which is zero and the number of characters you need so we require three characters okay so we have to mention the starting point and the number of letters you need and then we can simply return this value to the client client machine now how to return this value so whenever you want to send something from a client to server or from server to client we require these lines here, we require these two lines, in fact we, we require these three lines, so we can just reuse the code, just copy this code and paste it in your server side and yeah, everything will be same, yeah, we got instead of sending str, we need to say nickname here, because we are not sending a string, we are sending a nickname, which is a string itself, and that's it, so after this, let me say out.flush which will forcefully send it to data. Now server will send the data to the client and will print here uh, maybe this out data sent. So data sent from server to client. Now what I will do, I will mention that this message is from server. So we'll say s colon. So whatever message you are getting from server will, will have s colon. Okay, so that we can just differentiate between client messages and server messages. And we can even print this here. Okay, so this is the message sent from server. And on the client side, since server is sending a data, we need to print that data here. Now how to print? So first we have to take the data from the server, right? Now whenever you want to fetch something, we require these two lines for fetching. So we'll paste it here. Again, we need to change the string name. We'll name this as nickname so just remember whenever you use when you want to fetch values from the other machine we need to use buffer reader when you want to send data we use output stream writer now once we got your nickname we'll print that nickname here and we'll say this is c colon uh, data from server will print nickname so what we're expecting from the server is the nickname right and then if we run this code let's run the server first so you can see server says started server started and server is waiting for the client request we are sending a request from client so we got data from server is nav okay so we lost all the data from the server this is the data printed by your client which is c data from server and that's now so if you send navin, you will be getting nav. If you send some other data, you will get some different values. So that's how you send a request from client to server and then you get a response from server to client. We can also create a chat application here in which you'll, uh, a server will send data to client continuously and client will send data to server continuously. It's not just sending data and getting the response. It's you can continually talk to the server and server will talk to client. For that, we need to use while loop. Again, how to do that, we'll, do, we'll make a video on that. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you want that such type of videos where you can, uh, where you want a chatting application. So I'll be waiting for your comments there. Uh, if you like this video, just click on the like button and do subscribe for further videos.